Senator Scott. Thank you, Chairman Murray, for the opportunity to address the witnesses on such an important uh, topic around child care and preschool. We're looking for ways to really improve the outcome for the kids who are growing up in sometimes challenging circumstances. Uh, think about uh, good intentions. Uh, I think both sides probably have good intentions as it relates to the conversation and sometimes the debate around providing high quality uh, child care to folks who are in desperate need of it. I think about the approach that was going to be taken in the Build Back Better plan. Uh, that approach would have increased, according to the progressive think tanks, uh, increased the cost of child care from 15888 to around $29,000 in an attempt to make child care more affordable. I think they would have made child care less affordable. And again, we look at creating multiple systems or at least a different approach to child care that actually is harder to manage for the average family when you think about the 12 million uh, kids today who are in child care that, are, that is not fused to a family member. Those kids need the highest quality uh, of access possible. Um, if we want to see folks coming back to work solving this problem, bridging the gap, is so critically important to the kids who are literally looking for a safe place to learn, parents who are looking for a way to be able to have their kids in a safe environment, a good environment, so they can continue to work, because you can't be at work and at home at the same time. Uh, and we saw that challenge exacerbated throughout the pandemic. Parents uh, who needed to be at work but could not find a place for their kids, had to make what was an easy choice for most parents, take care of your kids first. And that's why so many parents work. And so one of the things I, I've done of the last four, I think maybe six years ago, is make sure that we kept the choice in the hands of the parents uh, through the legislation and the amendments that I made to legislation several years ago. And today I, I introduced legislation uh, the Child Care and Development Block Grant Reauthorization Act of 2022, because the Child Care and Development Block Grant Program has assisted working families and their children for more than 30 years, all while ensuring that parents have maximum freedom to make the best decisions for their children. In South Carolina today, thousands upon thousands of kids under the age of six and their parents in the workforce need those options in their quiver, so to speak, to make the best decisions for their kids. This is a lifeline for low-income families looking to participate in the workforce or continue their education. This bill also traditionally enjoyed immense bipartisan support. That's why we are actually having a conversation, in my opinion, today. My new bill uh, would make responsible enhancements to the CCDBG program to better support America's working families. Uh, one very important part that has been there that needs to continue to be there is giving vouchers so that parents can make the best decisions for their kids. Ms. Reynolds, with my minute left, uh, I know that you understand and appreciate this issue. You also uh, represent 900 licensed centers in Georgia. I believe that the <clears throat> nature of choice is critical for parents and their peace of mind while they're working. Can you address the importance of that flexibility? Absolutely, and I think you've heard every single panelist up here support that. So what I would like you to see is that you know, the, the industry is united, and we know uh, that the bill has moved significantly in the direction of recognizing that mixed delivery is key, whether it's the for-profit, not-for-profit sector, whether it's in Head Start, whether it's in private providers. Um, families come with different needs. Children come with different needs. Um, and we also, I want to stress that, because uh, sometimes I think this point gets lost, I, I agree that we've never looked at dividing child care at zero to two and then three to four. Um, it's a zero to five process for us. We know that a child's brain is 80% of the way uh, 
the flexibility ends at around three or minimizes an 80% develops when they hit age three. So we really want parents to have all of the choices so that they can identify as their child comes with unique needs. Um, some may be disabilities, some may be challenges with sensory developments, whatever it is, they can work and find that opportunity that is best for uh, their child. And so I think uh, that is a very key a component to it that I think Build Back Better has incorporated over time as well. Like it, it's, we all believe in the parents having choice. Thank you so much. Sorry I ran over time. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Murphy.